Hey, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Cyborg Voron 0.2 kit and my experiences with it and getting it going. Overall, you can see that I'm printing with it, and hey, that's a good sign, right? If you don't have a whole lot of time and you're just interested, should you get the kit or not? I would say I definitely recommend this kit for a budget buyer, and I would give it a 4 out of 5 in terms of uh, overall rating. I think it's a good solid kit in this price range. There are some trade-offs though, and I want you to be aware of those. Stay tuned and you'll learn a lot more. Thanks again for watching. Here's a close-up of the Cyborg Warren 0.2 doing some PLA printing. I do have the top hat all the way back because you want to do that when you're printing PLA. Just kind of give you a close-up of everything here. One thing that I noticed on this printer is that it's very quiet. The fans on it, Initially, I was a little concerned about, but I think they're probably just fine. Go ahead and open the door so you can see that. That's just, just like you'd expect. You can see the quality of the printed parts. I, I really found no issues with printed parts, with the exception of a few parts. These are probably not quite what I would consider PIF quality, but they're pretty close. A few close-ups as examples here. Got a nice texture on most of the panel clips. You can see that the kit does include black acrylic for both the back and the bottom here. It includes clear acrylic, and the acrylic seems to be perfectly fine quality for both the top hat as well as the, the side panels and front door. The Voron screen is included and installed. It, it installed pretty well. I did have a little bit of a tiny issue with the angle of the screen. The rails are clean and running. I did have some issues initially with the rails being rusty. If you were following my social media, I did talk about that a little bit. Cyborg did replace those rails. I'll talk more about that. The cable chain is decent quality, works fine. The heated bed is decent quality. I've got it installed here. Uh, the heated bed takes about 10 minutes to hit 100 C which really isn't too bad. So the Cyborg Voron 0.2 kit retails for about $469 US shipped as of the time of this video. I think that's a fantastic deal. Now having said that, there were a few parts that I just did not flat out use. One of those was the hot end. The main reason I didn't use the hot end is because the hot ends that I received just did not seem to be the highest quality. I actually had um, a few metal shamings on my hot end, so I don't think that's indicative of all the hot ends. I did talk to Cyborg about that, and it's probably more of a, a quality control thing. There was one other part that I found to be a little problematic, and that was the Bontech larger gear that they sent. There was a press fit bearing on the gear, and that bearing um, just wasn't a good idea. I really couldn't remove it. I needed to sand down the shaft. Um, I've heard of other people not having success with that. Luckily, I had a spare Bontech part that was laying around, and I went ahead and used that. I did have a bad fan that was intended to be used for the case cooling, so it was a 3010 fan, and that fan itself just had a bad bearing or something in it, so I replaced it with a spare 3010 fan that I had laying around. Other than that, the kit components that I used are entirely what was provided by Cyborg. This is a great printer if you're on a budget. If you're not on a budget, okay, if you've got a few hundred extra dollars to spend, you can get you know maybe things that are a little more cosmetic to your liking. This is an example of a self-source kit. So what I did was I purchased um, fasteners and, I, and rails and amongst other things, panels. You can see that I've got this really cool smoked uh, acrylic for the top hat. I've got some Gucci, you know, printed parts from Boxy Prints. You can see the color differentiation. So a lot of, a lot of different things here, but also a lot of similarities. They're both gonna extrude plastic. I've also got a CAN bus board on the back of this. Uh, this has an SKR Pico and a Raspberry Pi, which is kind of the recommended, but I've also got a CAN bus uh, receiver, transceiver here, and I've got a wiring channel, kind of like LDO kits have. So this is what you get if you want to spend three or $400 more than this guy. And here's my handy dandy LDO Voron 0.1 kit. This was one of the first Voron 0.1 kits that LDO made. This was around $700, 750 if I remember right. And it's, it's very similar. Everything that came here um, was a, a high-quality part. But at the end of the day, I mean, what's important to you? Do you want to pay a lot of money 
and get guaranteed parts that you know are going to work and work very well? Or do you want to pay a decent amount of money and get a printer that's going to work great on a budget? And may, maybe you'll have a few issues and, and trade-offs that you have to deal with. So that's really what, it, what the difference is between these three different options. So what are some of the trade-offs that you might run into if you build this printer? There are a few, and I want you to be aware of those. And I'm going to throw up a scorecard here that really walks through what I would rate each of the components. I felt that was probably one of the best ways to give information about this kit. At a very high level, um, some of the biggest things I ran into, a lot of this I've provided to, to Cyborg as well, and I think they're probably going to um, use this feedback in the future. Some of it will be easy to change. Others, they may not change, and you'll just have to live with it. So probably one of the biggest things uh, that I ran into, one of the first things off the bat, were the extrusions. There's nothing wrong with these extrusions. They work great. I think the kit itself advertises them as Maker Beam XL compatible. They may be, uh, but they are not compatible with a lot of the community mods out there, including no drop nuts. So I ended up having to remix both no drop nuts as well as nut carriers in order for in order for me to use those parts. Now, not everyone is necessarily going to want to use the no drop nut mods, but they do make the build a heck of a lot easier, especially on the Z, and especially when you're dealing with the panels. I would definitely recommend using those no drop nut mods that I made, and I'll have a link to those in the description. The other thing that you're going to need in order to do that is you're going to need the DIN 562 square nuts because hex nuts are simply not going to fit the no drop nut mod. There's just not enough room in the extrusions. Once you get around that, the extrusions work great. Everything goes together. Cyborg did include these little PCB pieces and they recommend using those for the, the rails uh, when you install those. I do not recommend using those. If you tighten those things down too much and if you tighten them frequently, which you're going to need to do after maintenance, those are going to break and you're going to have a problem because now your rails aren't going to stay in place. And if you want to fix that, you're going to have to rip everything down, especially on the Z, because you need access to the channel to insert uh, those nuts. The next trade-off would be around the Bontech gear. The Bontech, all the Bontech gear parts are clones, which is to be expected at this price point. I would recommend getting the larger gear. I would buy that separately. Uh, that's only about a $6 part, maybe 6 to $7. The reason you want to do that is because there's a press fit bearing on the end of the shaft. And that press fit bearing will not come off unless you really want to wrench on it or, you know, it's very difficult to remove. I do believe that Cyborg is going to remove that for future kits, but depending on when you order your kit, you may get that. The fans are kind of an off-brand from what I can tell. I wouldn't necessarily tell you not to use them. Um, I'm actually using them. I was surprised how quiet they were, and I was also surprised that they did bridging relatively well. So I think for now they're fine. I Just because I've never heard of these fans, um, I do imagine that I'll end up replacing them at some point down the road. You might want to get a Sun On or a Delta. You're going to pay a lot more for high quality fans. The GDS time are kind of probably similar quality, maybe a little better than what's included, but I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using those. Overall, the parts that were included were very good. These are all the spares that I had left after the build. Unfortunately, I was short. A couple of spots. Uh, I was short three shims. Um, luckily I had enough to do the motion system but I did not have enough for the where the springs go with the bed so I had to borrow those from another build, from another kit that I had. Uh, beyond that I think I got short of some M310 screws as well. Uh, you can definitely order a few extra M310 screws and some shims. Now overall the 3D printed parts were very good and I only ran into a few issues. I did have one piece, the shuttle, which fits into the uh, mini self burner. That part was warped. I also, when I inserted the magnets for the door handle, I did happen to split the, the ABS piece on that. Probably not a big deal. I ended up reprinting it and I found that that handle was actually over extruded just a tiny bit. Uh, beyond that, I think that was about the only issue I had. Quite frankly, I was, I was shocked. I thought I would run into a lot more issues, maybe have some cracked or split parts, but I really didn't. So that's really good news. I am a perfectionist when it comes to 3D printed parts. So I'm going to reprint things unless I feel like they're perfect. And I did not really reprint anything other than those parts I mentioned. One thing that I did recommend though, and that I, that I would recommend for all builders, get an extra roll of at least black or red. You probably don't need both. It's a good idea to get both if you want to have the accent color. 
But if you had to pick one, get a black roll of eSun ABS. That's going to allow you to reprint anything and it'll still blend. So when I did reprint my door handle with eSun ABS, it blended perfectly with the rest of it. One of the suggestions that I gave to Cyborg is that maybe include 100 grams or 200 grams of filament. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that because they're trying to keep their prices down. I have realistic expectations when you get your parts. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things that pleasantly surprised me about this kit. And one of them was this wiring diagram. So this is a really nice diagram. The wiring as well was really good. It was pre-terminated, so everything came crimped and terminated properly. I did not notice any issues with any of the crimps, and they all plugged in just fine. Uh, all the wiring was great, so that, that really simplified the build. I didn't have to do a whole lot of crimping. There was a couple areas where, like for example the part fans, there's only two PWM fan controllers. There's one 24 volt fan controller. So, you know, because of the part fans, you have two part fans, you're going to need one connection for two part fans. I did have to make a Y connector. That was pretty easy. But uh, I would recommend getting a Y connector if you don't have the ability to do crimps. Other than that, um, I had no issue with the wiring. The Gemini Fly was also a really pleasant surprise. It came with clipper pre-installed, and not only was clipper pre-installed, but both mainsail and fluid were. Uh, I quickly switched over to mainsail because that's what I'm used to. I'll plug a link in the description for how to do that, but it's very simple. The only thing that wasn't pre-installed was uh, there was some kind of DNS package I had to add because uh, it would only allow me to connect by the IP address otherwise, so that was real simple. The other nice thing is I didn't have to compile Clipper. I didn't even have to change the Clipper or the printer configuration file because it already had my board ID as well as my display ID in there. So that probably, that's going to save you a lot of time, and especially if you're somebody who doesn't like to get in and do the configuration and the software side of it. This kit is really nice for that. So that, and I would say there's advantages of this kit over some of the other more expensive kits because of that. So the Gemini Fly, it includes the Raspberry Pi equivalent, the compute, as well as the printer board equivalent, the MCU. So all that is in one board. It's a little bit bigger board than what you might see on like the SKR Picos with the Raspberry Pi, but that's fine. You know, it works out really well. No complaints there. The motors are, are quite good. That, so the, there's a Moons motor for the extruder. There's also some, I guess, generic Cyborg branded uh, motors for the, X, the A and B or the X and Y. I don't see any issues with them. I also have not really pushed them quite fast yet. It's running pretty well. And I, I don't notice any kind of skipping or, you know, the cubes that I'm getting off this are quite good. Something else I really liked about the kit, and I haven't seen this in the more expensive kits, is that all of the screws and parts that, that you need fastener-wise are in this nice little toolbox here. And it's all written out. I think I shared this in the unboxing video. But this makes it really easy to find things. I know uh, in the past I've had bags of screws, and a lot of kits provide those. And those bags can just, they get lost easily, they fall on the floor. Uh, this is really nice. This will make your, your whole process a lot easier. In summary, I think this is a great kit, especially if you're a budget builder. There are a few trade-offs, as I've covered in this video, but those trade-offs are pretty small. At the end of the day, $469 to get you this kit shipped to your door with all the printed parts. Everything you pretty much need to build a, a Voron 0.2, that's a great value. If it were me, I'd spend maybe another $50, $60 and address the hot end, put a little bit higher quality hot end in here, and I would also get a genuine Bontech gear. Beyond that, I think you've got everything you need, and the proof's right here. It's printing, it's printing well. In fairness, I have not fully put this through the paces. I haven't tested you know, all the filaments that I, that I normally want to do on this, but I'm going to do that at some point. I hope this video has been helpful. I did want to get something out sooner rather than later because I know a lot of people were wondering this build did take me a little bit longer to do because of the rail issue, but I'm really thankful and appreciative for Cyborg providing this kit to me uh, at no charge so I could review it, give them some feedback, and then help you make an educated decision. Now, these kits are available now. You can buy them directly from Cyborg's site, or you can order them through Ally Express. They're both going to run you roughly $469 as of the time of this video. Uh, I do hope that this, this helps you make a decision, and... Uh, Please let me know if you end up going with this kit and what your thoughts are after you build it. Uh, thanks again for watching and happy printing.